All right. It's halfway there. Well, more than halfway. Okay, this should be good. And if for some reason we're not, I'll upload it later. So, hey everyone, I am Ashley. I am the clinic manager at Heart of Wellness in Tumwater, Washington. Uh, we are a collaborative group practice and we are focused on healing for the whole you. Within our practice, we currently have six naturopaths, two acupuncturists, a massage therapist, and a dietitian health coach uh, who form an amazing dynamic team that are dedicated to your best health. With this amazing and diverse group of clinicians and our incredible staff of patient, clinical, and financial care coordinators, we are able to help people of all ages and stages throughout the whole cycle of care. Uh, recently, Heart of Wellness launched a fully HIPAA compliant and secure telemedicine program. These visits are billable to insurance and many of our patients are utilizing this method of care while we're still in this um, partial lockdown. Uh, so now to on, stay. To, what's that? And it's here to stay. Yeah, well, we're all it's treading cautiously with our social activities. Feel free to schedule telemedicine. Um, so David Lerner, David practices acupuncture and functional medicine at Heart of Wellness. He's been in practice for 25 years and is really excited to bring you information on the WALS protocol tonight. If you have any questions for David, enter them in the chat. He may answer them live or later in the talk. If you have technical questions or questions about Heart of Wellness, you can ask them there also, and I will answer them for you. If not now, I will get you an answer shortly after. Um, all right, David, it's on to you. If you're going to tell us a little bit more about yourself before you get started. Yeah, thanks, all Ashley. Right. You're welcome. Um, so we're going to talk tonight about the WALS protocol. This is something I'm very passionate about. Um, I have been following Dr. Wall since 2011 when I first saw her TED talk, which is on my website, um, which is an amazing talk to see. If you haven't seen it, it's really, really, uh, it's really great, although we're going to basically be giving you a version of it here. Um, and I was really inspired by what she did for her own health and the plan that she came up with. And I had been wanting to study with her for a really long time. And last year I made that become a reality and I, and I did study with her and now I'm a certified Wells um, protocol clinician. And uh, I'm really excited to be doing that work and to be affiliated with her and, and excited to be presenting on this topic tonight. Um, the Wells protocol is a new way to treat chronic diseases, especially autoimmune disease, and it's using diet and lifestyle modifications. And we're gonna go into those. Um, as Ashley said, I've been practicing for 25 years. The last six have been at Heart and Wellness. Um, I, I practiced in Seattle for a, a long time and have been moved to Olympia in 2010 and have been practicing Olympia in Olympia exclusively since about uh, 2013 or 14. Um, I use acupuncture, I use nutrition, I use botanical and functional medicine, and I specialize in treating autoimmune disease, cardiovascular disease, uh, metabolic disorders like prediabetes, um, digestive disorders like SIBO, and neurological disorders like cognitive decline and hormonal disorders, and supportive uh, cancer care. Um, Dr. Walls is a practicing MD who's still in practice. She's a professor in the Department of Neurology and Internal Medicine at the University of Iowa. And before we get into um, the protocol, I want to let everybody know that the statements and products shown in this presentation and on my website have not been evaluated by the US FDA. These statements and products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I expressly disclaim any liability with respect to actions taken or not taken based on any or all of the information or other contents of these materials. They're for educational and informational purposes only, not intended as medical advice. The information does not create, nor is it intended to replace a relationship with a qualified healthcare professional. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding medical condition or your health and prior to starting dietary routines, exercise, or supplements. So I wanna start off by having everybody think about how many vegetables, how many cups of vegetables did you have in the last 24 hours? And uh, a good way to assess that is to think about if you took your dinner plate and you covered your dinner plate 
just with vegetables, that would be three cups of vegetables. Um, three cups of vegetables so that you can't see the bottom. Um, potatoes don't count because they're a starch. So kind of keep that in your mind as, as we go forward here. So um, it's become pretty clear, um, and I don't think this will be a surprise to anybody who's here tonight, that we're recognizing that our chronic diseases such as heart disease and stroke and diabetes and obesity and metabolic syndrome, um, which is kind of like a pre-diabetic condition, uh, COPD and some cancers are at the root caused by lifestyle induced issues. This also includes autoimmunity, mental health problems and cognitive decline. We have in this country an autoimmune epidemic right now. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what autoimmunity is, uh, these are diseases where the body attacks its own tissues. Uh, examples of this would be uh, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease and colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple scler sclerosis, which Dr. Walls has, um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which I see a lot of in our practice, um, psoriasis. Those are all cases where the body, is, the immune system is um, confused and attacking itself. Um, we have 25 million Americans who have a serious autoimmune di diagnosis. And then we have an additional 75 million Americans who have symptoms of autoimmune disease like pain, fatigue, and, and or brain fog, and they have autoantibodies, meaning that if we draw their blood, we'll have antibodies showing that uh, there's proteins, there's, there's immune proteins in their blood that are attacking their own tissue. It hasn't gotten to the degree that they've gotten a diagnosis yet, or they haven't been tested for autoantibodies because their symptoms aren't strong enough. Um, in 2011, Americans paid over $100 billion for autoimmune drug treatment. Um, immune dysfunction can be treated, stabilized, and even reversed using just using therapeutic diet and lifestyle interventions. And if you're leery of that, we'll, we're going to go into that right now. Dr. Walls has seen this in her clinics. She's seen it in her clinical trials, and she writes about this in her books. So uh, what, what brought you here tonight? Um, you know, uh, it's possible you're having symptoms and you have autoantibodies, but you may not have diag gotten diagnosed um, with, with an autoimmune disease. Maybe you're having brain fog or pain or fatigue. You've seen a lot of physicians. You just don't feel well. You don't actually have a diagnosis yet. Um, Maybe you've heard of others who've recovered and are doing remarkably well using the WALS protocol. You're curious, you wanna learn, could it help you recover your health? Or you actually have multiple sclerosis or optic neuritis, which oftentimes goes along with multiple sclerosis. Um, and you're here to see what you can do to slow down the progression of your disease and protect your brain from future damage. Or maybe you have another autoimmune condition or other brain related problem and you wanna do all you can to protect protect your brain from future damage. Let's talk about uh, Dr. Walls. Uh, she is, she does clinical research. She's in, she's in, uh, she's a medical doctor um, and she continues to practice. She uh, is affiliated with the VA in, in, at the University of Iowa and she's on staff at the medical school. She does clinical research at the University of Iowa. Um, she was recently awarded a $1 million research grant funded by the National MS Society to study uh, the WALS protocol for treating MS patients. Um, there's been rigorous analysis of the WALS diet plans and research that's been published in peer-reviewed publications. And she travels the world at this point, uh, speaking and teaching about the latest innovations and the things that she's finding and the research that she's doing. She now has multiple peer-reviewed publications that have been published on her research. Um, but it wasn't always a rosy picture. Um, this is Dr. Walls in 2003. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2000. She had symptoms long before that, but didn't get a diagnosis until 2000. And by 2003, within three years, she was in a tilt recline wheelchair, struggling with severe brain fog and severe fatigue. Uh, 2007 looked like that. Uh, she was so weak, she couldn't sit up in a regular chair. Uh, fortunately, she was still able to work and still working at the university and at the VA. 
she had electrical face pain. She, it started, her symptoms started with electrical face pain due to trigeminal neuralgia that began in 1980. And that just got continually worse. So it took about 20 years for her to get a diagnosis, but it started with the trigeminal neuralgia. She had uh, leg weakness, which was eventually what got her to get the, the diagnosis of MS in 2000, which was continuously worsening. She took uh, potent disease modifying drug therapy, which is what's the standard of care treatment for MS and things continued to get worse. Um, she had two young children at the time and she wanted to model resilience for them. So she would ultimately decide the newest drugs from the best MS doctors in the country were not gonna stop her march towards a bedridden life. And she continued to decline. Uh, she began studying the science related to nutrition and MS and began experimenting on herself. Uh, first, she started with nutritional supplements and these eased the fatigue slightly. She was still getting worse, but it, slow, it was slowing down. And then in 2002, she was introduced to the paleo diet by Lauren Cordain, and he's sort of the father of the paleo diet. And in 2004, she started taking additional nutritional supplements, omega-3 fatty acids, creatine, which is useful for mitochondrial health and for muscle strength. Coenzyme Q10, which is well known for mitochondrial, its mitochondrial benefits, and B vitamins, who do a whole slew of things in the body, um, all aimed at targeting her mitochondrial health. She was still declining, but it slowed down. And then in 2007, she discovered the Institute for Functional Medicine and took their course on neuroprotection. From the, from the Institute for Functional Medicine, which is also known as IFM, she learned a more detailed framework for understanding the interaction between environment, genetics, lifestyle, biochemical functioning of her cells. Um, Functional medicine is something that I practice here at Heart and Wellness in conjunction with uh, the doctors um, here at the clinic. And for those of you who don't know, don't know what it is, it's um, basically functional medicine is looking for the root cause of disease. Typically, we do a lot of proactive lab work that helps us to um, recognize a patient's biochemical individuality, what makes one person look different than another. You know, 10 people with MS can come into the clinic and get 10 different treatments depending on what, what's underlying the MS, what's out of balance. So we're looking for biochemical individuality and come up with a very customized treatment protocol. There's no one size fits all in functional medicine. Um, typically, we're doing a, a, a very thorough analysis of gut health, of immune function, of mitochondrial health, blood sugar, hormones, inflammatory pathways. And Dr. Walls focused on creating the most optimal environment for her cells, her brain cells, and her mitochondria, primarily through exercise and nutrition. She integrated basic science, evolutionary biology, the paleo diet, ancestral health, the paleo diet, uh, functional medicine. She studied all these concepts and integrated them into a protocol designed to optimize the mitochondria in her brain. She basically came to the conclusion that MS is a disease that affects the mitochondria. So by doing things to optimize her mitochondria, particularly the mitochondria in her brain where MS is, is focused in combination with a modified paleo diet stressing very key nutrients, that's when the magic happened. That's Dr. Walls on October 1st, 2007. That was uh, after seven years of the best conventional treatment that Western medicine had to offer. She was seeing the best MFS doctors in the country, taking the state-of-the-art disease-modifying drugs for progressive MS, and she was declining rapidly. And after 12 months, after only 12 months, of her diet and lifestyle protocol. Um, she was pain-free, had no brain fog. She was walking the neighborhood with her family and able to complete an 18 mile bike ride. Um, her case, I will say is atypical. This is not uh, typical that people have this dramatic results in a year, but uh, she was a testament to the power of uh, diet and lifestyle and it, uh, it worked. 
um, her neurologist, uh, and, and keep in mind that she was a conventionally trained medical doctor when all this happened. She was not an integrative and functional medicine doctor in the early days of this. Um, she had to break free of that box and do her own research and come up with her own protocol um, to figure out what was going to help her. The, the conventional model was failing her and it was failing her miserably. Um, her neurologist at that time agreed that she should just discontinue her disease modifying drugs. That was in 2008. And she has not been on those medications ever since. This completely transformed how she thinks about disease and health. It transformed her clinical tra practice and it transforms the research that she did and she continues to do today. So she wanted to study this work now and uh, bring it out to um, make it available to the masses, make it available to her colleagues and not just say, uh, oh, this is one empirical case and it doesn't mean very much because it's one case. Let's, let's go ahead and let's study it now. And she had the best resources and background to do that being that she was on staff at the University of Iowa Medical School and came from a conventional background. So in 2015, she conducted her first clinical trial where she used the interventions that she used on herself and others with progressive MS. The disability status score was 6.2. What that means is that these patients, the patients that were recruited for her study were somewhere between needing a cane and a walker. And when you have progressive MS, it's not considered possible, at least through conventional medical eyes, to have a spontaneous remission. And the expectation is that you will decline 10 to 20% every year. So she studied the same interventions that she used in her recovery in the clinical trials. And we're talking stress management, medita like meditation, uh, targeted vitamins and supplements, in particular uh, B vitamins, fish oil, and vitamin D, a modified paleo diet that we'll be discussing a bit more coming up, a home exercise program and electrical stimulation of her muscles that was supervised by her physical therapist. So she's got three versions of her diet, which is one of the things I love about it. It's very, very flexible. It's not a one size fits all. Um, and another thing I really love about it is it's incredibly nutrient dense. What does that mean? It means that it's it's packed with nutrients, and this is a they've uh, studied her diet and looked at the amounts of nutrients that you get from her diet, and this is a great graph of it. Um, you can see 100% uh, of the RDA right here, um, and then you can see in uh, blue is the Walls diet. You can see in red is the uh, standard U.S. diet. Um, and the Walls diet meets 100% of the US RDAs without nutritional supplements at all, except for vitamin D. And pretty much nobody gets 100% of the RDAs from vitamin D. It's nearly impossible um, because without supplementing. Um, but you can see the, you know, the difference between this, particularly the B vitamins. I mean, this is just nuts. You know, the, the standard American diet gets a lot of riboflavin, mostly because they're eating a lot of fortified, crappy, um, carbohydrates, starchy carbohydrates that the US government floods with fortified nutrients. And even with that, they're getting about 150, 175%. The Walls diet is getting over 800% of riboflavin without eating any processed foods that's fortified with riboflavin in it. Um, I, I think the Walls diet um, compares to any diet out there in terms of nutrient density uh, as being the best or nearly the best. Um, so the, let's talk a little bit about the premise of the diet. There's three different versions of the diet. The first version is very similar to a Mediterranean diet. The second version is very similar to a paleo diet. And the third version is very similar to a keto diet. Um, and depending on how uh, strict you need to be and how motivated you are, um, you can be in any of those diets and do great. Um, I have uh, patients um, and, and myself included that eats very similar to the first diet, which is like a Mediterranean diet. And uh, it's a very healthy diet. Um, Dr. Walls goes in and out of doing stage two and stage three. She doesn't believe anyone should be in a keto diet all the time. So she cycles in and out of it, but it is the one that's the most extreme and the most aggressive for neurological disorders. So for someone with progressive MS, they're definitely gonna wanna consider doing her Walls three keto, or at least part of the time doing Walls three keto. But there's a couple of common denominators across the, the diets. 
Um, she wants everybody off of gluten um, and dairy and sugar and processed foods. She is off of eggs because she is sensitive to eggs and it's hard to find this in the book. I get this question a lot, but it is in the book where it says, um, I'm off of eggs because I'm sensitive to them. If you do a trial coming off of eggs for at least a month, and reintroduce them and don't notice that you have any uh, exacerbations of any of your symptoms and you're fine to eat eggs. So I wouldn't say that eggs across the board is something she takes people off. Gluten she does for sure and dairy pretty much. Um, uh, there are some exceptions one could do. There's a really good uh, gluten uh, um, wheat profile done by a lab by Cyrex that looks for gluten sensitivity, non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And if somebody comes back negative on that, I'm a little more comfortable with having them eat wheat. A, a really big problem with gluten, and when I say gluten, I'm saying wheat because that's primarily what we're eating when we're eating gluten. Um, the, the bigger problem with gluten may actually be eating non-organic wheat because it all has Roundup in it, which has glyphosate in it, which is horrific for uh, health and causes something called leaky gut syndrome. Um, so if one is going to eat wheat, I think it's incredibly important that they eat organic wheat to uh, know that they don't have glyphosate in their wheat. If it's not organic, you're, you're, you're shoveling down glyphosate. Um, and then she, the other biggie for her, for all three of the diets is uh, she wants you to stuff your face with fruits and vegetables. Um, so we're talking nine cups a day of fruits and vegetables broken down by three cups a day of dark grief, leafy greens, such as spinach and chard and kale and arugula and romaine lettuce. Three cups a day of colorful fruits and vegetables, such as oranges and grapefruits and red pepper and, and, and blackberries and beets and pomegranates. Uh, and three cups a day of sulfur rich vegetables, which are uh, very important for detoxification pathways and have anti-cancer properties. And those are things like cabbage and onions and garlic and cauliflower and bok choy. Um, yeah. Not easy to do, uh, but they, they pay a huge amount of health benefits if you can do it. And this is why uh, her diets are so nutrient dense, or part of the reason why they're so nutrient dense. This is another big reason why they're so nutrient dense. We're going to be talking about that next. And across all three diets, she recommends this. Interestingly, on the keto diet, she actually lowers that to two to three cups of each because um, it's very difficult to stay in ketosis eating that much carbohydrate, even though they're non starchy carbohydrate it's really difficult to stay in ketosis eating nine cups a day of fruits and vegetables. Um, and the other big thing is that she wants everybody to um, uh, be eating uh, grass-fed meats, which um, are incredibly nutrient dense and a lot healthier for you than eating grain-fed meats. Um, wild fish, about 16 ounces a week, uh, about uh, six to 21 ounces a day of grass-fed meat and organ meat. Uh, and this gets a lot of reactions from people because uh, they don't like the way it tastes and uh, they avoid it and it's gotten a really bad rap. Um, but uh, organ meat is the most nutrient dense food on the planet. Nothing compares to it. No, no vegetable source compares to it. Say what you will about organ meat. It is high in cholesterol. It tastes nasty to some people. Um, but in terms of nutrient density, it packs a wallop, particularly for B vitamins. So she likes people to be having about 12 ounces of organ meat a week. Most people do not like to do this. Um, the alternative is to, you can purchase uh, organ meat in pill form from Paleo Valley, um, which is what I recommend to my patients. Um, the other thing that I do, we do in our house is we buy uh, from you, there's a bunch, of, there's, there's various places around the country. The one I buy from is U.S. Organ Meats and they sell a liverwurst, um, which is like mixing organ meats with ground beef. And then they make like these taco, these ground beefs mixed in, you know, regular ground meat mixed in with um, kidney, liver and heart. And they can kind of disguise it in there. So like even kids usually can't tell. Um, so that's another option for getting it in. But the Paleo Valley, um, uh, mixed organ meats is a good alternative for people. So you can do that. So don't get too freaked out about that. You're gonna have to start cooking liver. This is what her, 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 um, her meals look like. Um, it's a lot of produce. So take a look at the salad. <laughs> it's, 
it's a lot. And uh, part of why it's a lot is because it fills you up. So it keeps you from eating um, starchy carbohydrates and sugar and junk food. Um, so that's a big salad. That's an elderberry smoothie. Um, you'll notice if you start looking at the recipes in her cookbook and her book, smoothies usually make it in there. The reason being that it's hard to get the nine cups a day in without making a smoothie or some sort of throwing a whole bunch of fruits and vegetables into a blender and drinking them. Um, and that's, a, that's what a, her typical dinner looks like. That's lamb chops with uh, a whole bunch of cooked greens and Brussels sprouts and mushrooms. And again, you know, it's a lot. Um, it's more than most people um, put on their dinner plate. So um, this was her first study that got published. Those two top lines, that green line there, the blue line there, the green line is quality of life. Um, the blue line is uh, improvement in energy over time. And so, you know, you can see this started here and went here, and this started here and went here. A five point improvement is considered clinically significant. And you can see she got quite a bit more than a five point improvement. So the study design was impressive. The bottom line was even more uh, impressive. Um, this was fatigue severity. So this is where fatigue severity started, and this is where fatigue severity ended in 12 months. And to, to, to tell you how significant this was, um, this is the largest reduction in fatigue that has ever been reported to date in the most severely disabled group of MS patients studied to date. Um, anxiety and depression scores, the, um, they declined over time as well. Uh, and then cognitive ability improved over time. This is significant because with progressive MS, it's expected to steadily worsen over time, including thinking ability. So this did not, they actually got better over a 12 month period. So then in 2017, um, she, uh, she put together her second study and this was a randomized control study looking at her diet versus the typical diet with relapsing remitting MS. And this also showed improvement in quality of life, improvement in mental health, improvement in motor function. And then in 2016, she was given a $1 million grant from the MS Society to compare uh, another popular uh, MS diet, the Swank diet, which is a low fat diet to the Walls diet. This was incredibly significant because after her TED talk came out in 2011, which pretty much went viral, it's on my website if you want to see it, um, the MS Society banned her from speaking at their events. And their reason for banning her was because they felt like she was giving patients a false sense of hope for something that wasn't true. Um, at that time, they had zero studies on nutrition and MS. All their studies were on disease modifying drugs in MS. And they started noticing on their social media that a lot of people were checking out Dr. Walls and it got their attention. So they started checking out what was going on with Dr. Walls and the results she was having. Um, and they have since asked her to speak at their, um, their events. And not only that, they now have 14 trials looking at nutrition and MS. She is the principal investigator on six of those trials and they gave her a million dollars to study the Walls protocol. She's completed all the study visits for this study. Uh, she's in the process of analyzing the data. She thinks that she'll be presenting that sometime in 2021. She has published an analysis of the changes in motor function from that study. These videos and the research paper are at, on the website, terrywalls.com backslash research papers. Um, and this is all becoming more mainstream where 10 years ago it was not. This article was published in 2016. Um, you know, this is showing that there's a much greater recognition. Uh, most of the people who are on this call, I suspect, know this already, but the conventional scientific community has been very slow to jump on this bandwagon. Um, there's a greater recognition that diet choices affect um, uh, the microbiome, which is the, uh, uh, the bacteria in the gut and the, the relationship between the good bacteria and the pathogenic bacteria and, and fungus. Um, that aren't so good, um, and as well as other environmental factors such as infections, nutrient levels, toxin exposures, and the impact they have in turning certain genes on and off. Um, so what we found in the last 20 years is that your genetic predispositions aren't necessarily reality, and uh, you can affect them via diet and lifestyle. This is called epigenetics. You can affect which genes turn on and off based on how you're living. Um, and it also affects immune balance over here. 
um, making someone more or less prone to getting autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease doesn't just happen randomly. Um, these are T regulatory cells. These are the parts of the immune system that we really wanna bump up. T regulatory cells help to modify the immune system to keep it so that we have a strong immune system, but we can distinguish between self and non-self and not attack ourselves. Whereas if the immune system's imbalanced and we get too many T effector cells, not enough T regulatory cells, then the immune system goes haywire and starts attacking itself. Um, one of the things that we know affects us a lot are metabolites from the microbiome or what are known as post uh, biotics. We've heard of prebiotics, we've heard of probiotics, but postbiotics are a term that's becoming more popular in the past few years. And those are short chain fatty acids that are produced from good bacteria. I would actually say they're more important than probiotics. I'm sort of moving away from using probiotics more and more in my practice. And I like using prebiotics, which help to give nutritional substrate for the good bacteria to grow. And then when the good bacteria grow, they produce short chain fatty acids like butyrate, which are postbiotics, metabol metabolites that are postbiotics, and they have a very strong effect on increasing these T regulatory cells, which is what we wanna re hit really, really, really hard when there's a concern about autoimmune disease. Um, you know, the microbial metabolites talk to our immune system and that immune system activity will talk to our brain, leading to an impact on our mood and on the level of brain inflammation. So, you know, we've come to this recognition, and this was also published uh, in 2017. Um, there's a real recognition now that the gut health, in particular the microbiome, which affects um, cells all over the body, is really, really important to address and try to um, strengthen as much as we can. In 2019, it was clearly shown and published that dietary interventions had a powerful effect on MS progression or regression. It showed that the benefits of diet, whether or not somebody was on drug therapy or not, um, it showed that addressing diet and lifestyle are key to protecting the brain and reducing the risk of early dementia. And it also showed uh, that avoiding smoking and avoiding uh, toxins was uh, important. And sounds a lot like what we're talking about, implementing the WALS protocol. Uh, Dr. Walls has a new study right now that she's enrolling for, and this is for newly diagnosed relapsing or lip, uh, remitting MS patients um, who have been offered and declined um, drug therapy because they want to use diet and lifestyle instead. Um, it requires two visits to Iowa. Um, if you are interested, you would uh, contact MS Diet Study at healthcare.uiowa.edu. You'll get a baseline assessment for walking vision, motor function, cognitive function. You'll also get an MRI. You'll get training and support on implementing uh, the study diet, a stress reduction program, and an exercise program. You'll get virtual support. You'd be conducting uh, some surveys intermittently through the study, attending monthly support group meetings, and then you come back in 12 months to repeat all the assessments. It's a pretty, it's a pretty neat diet um, study, excuse me. So let's come back to this question. How many cups of vegetables would you like to eat every day? What's your goal now? Um, I hope that um, this inspired you about the possibility that eating more vegetables and fruits and getting rid of processed foods and things like gluten and dairy can have on your health and healing. You can uh, pick up Dr. Wall's books. Uh, the Wall's Protocol is newly expanded and just got re-released um, in March. And I think it's like 12 bucks on Amazon. Um, it gives you a lot of depth into everything we just spoke about um, and then gives you some recipes at the end of it. And the cookbook, which I love and I recommend a lot, um, it's sort of the opposite. It's uh, uh, recipe heavy and they're simple recipes. Um, you know, she works with a patient population at the VA. So it tends to be um, a population that's not wealthy and oftentimes is not as motivated to take on um, uh, big cooking projects. So they're simple recipes. Um, they, you can, they're designed so you can customize them for version one, two, or three of her diet plan. Um, and they're great. I, I highly recommend it. So if you buy the cookbook, you'll get the recipes and you'll get like the Cliff Notes version on the Walls Protocol. So I actually recommend if people are only gonna buy one book, probably buy the cookbook. 
Um, but having both is a good idea. And then you can follow Dr. Walls on social media to see what she's eating. She, she takes a lot of pictures of what she's eating and posts it uh, and what she's doing to protect her brain, learn more about um, the latest research. Um, you know, her book, The Walls Protocol, which we just talked about, has the latest recommendations on fasting, ketogenic eating, metabolic resilience, personalizing supplements, neurorehabilitation, and, and more information, and the cookbook. Um, and I'm also doing this work in my practice here at Heart and Wellness. So if you want to see me, um, this is a big part of what I do now, particularly since I got uh, certified and that I work with Dr. Walls directly. And we have monthly calls with her where we go over cases. You can also download a copy of her research papers um, at www.terrywalls.com uh, slash research papers reach out to her team to learn more about her next study at MS Diet Study at healthcare.uiowa.edu. Um, and that's the end of what I wanted to present. So I want to open this up to questions. Um, and I got to figure out how to see those. I think I go to stop screen share probably. Let's try that and see what happens. Yeah, okay. And then we got chat. Um, someone sent me a message that just jumped over my screen. Hello, hello. Hey, I know you. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Can you see all the chats? You want me to read them to you or? Um, I do see the chats. Um, we got from Ocean. Hey, Ocean. Nice to have you here. Um, will you please, uh, will you please to know how the walls fits in with caring for those with dementia and Alzheimer's? Okay, great question. Um, so I'm also trained in the Bredesen protocol and I studied with Dr. Bredesen. I did that in 2016 before I studied with Dr. Walls and they, they dovetail together beautifully. Um, Bredesen is a neurologist who wrote the book, The End of Alzheimer's and has a very large protocol that he recommends based on functional medicine. He also comes from a conventional neurology background. He was a, he was a, he was a professor at UCLA and uh, kind of broke free of that and now is a functional medicine neurology specializing in how, how we use functional medicine to um, treat and reverse um, Alzheimer's disease. Um, so uh, they work really, really well together. Um, I, he, he's got a diet plan that's similar to the Walls diet, but a little bit different. And I kind of like customize them depending on who I'm working with. So if you have dementia or Alzheimer's, or if you, um, have signs that you have, uh, that you're concerned that you might have dementia and Alzheimer's. And keep in mind that most people who get an Alzheimer's diagnosis will tell you that they had symptoms starting 20 years before. And that's really the best time to treat this. It is not a good idea to say, I will wait until this gets worse to treat it. It's much harder to treat somebody who has an Alzheimer's diagnosis compared to somebody who says, I am noticing cognitive decline, but it's just subjective. I notice it, nobody else really notices it. Um, but I notice it, uh, take that seriously. And that you're, that, that's the best time to treat this. It's, very, it's, it's a lot harder once you're farther along and, and you have a diagnosis. So um, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, Ocean, so right back. But yes, this is, um, this is, an, this, this is a great place to start um, for anybody who's concerned about cognitive health, anybody who has an active dementia process, caregivers who are taking care of the folks with dementia and Alzheimer's. I think this is an incredible diet for just about anybody, um, but particularly folks with neurological disorders like Alzheimer's and dementia. If they wanna push it up a notch and start getting into doing all the, the Bredesen testing and the Bredesen protocol, gets a lot more expensive and gets a lot more in depth, but you know, depending on how far you wanna go with this, um, you know, we can do that. Uh, Sjogren's and insulin resistance. Um, so Sandra is asking about Sjogren's and insulin resistance. And I, 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 I'm not sure exactly what the question is, but if I had a guess, I'm going to say, uh, is this a good diet for Sjogren's and insulin resistance? Sjogren's is an autoimmune disease. This is a, um, this is a diet designed for autoimmune disease. It's not specific for any one autoimmune disease, even though Dr. Walls has MS and the large majority of patients who do this diet 
have MS because they've seen the progress she has made. But there is no reason to believe this wouldn't work for other autoimmune diseases for the same reason that it worked for her and with MS. So yes, if someone comes to me with Sjogren's, this would be the first thing I would tell them to do. Um, we would also run a bunch of lab work to see if I could kind of, from a functional medicine perspective, look at it uh, from a more holistic viewpoint to see if there are areas that are out of balance that are uh, making this person's body hospitable to have Sjogren's symptoms. And if we can treat from that perspective, um, I would recommend they do something called the fasting mimicking diet, which was the last webinar that I did about a month ago with James Kelly from Prolon, which is worth watching if you haven't seen it. Um, the fasting mimicking diet and intermittent fasting are both excellent for people with autoimmune disease. They've been shown to upregulate something called autophagy, which is cellular pruning. They've also been shown to take out aberrant autoimmune cells and new stem cells um, uh, will form. So it's a really good treatment for folks with autoimmune disease. Insulin resistance, yes. Um, this is an amazing diet for insulin resistance. This is a low glycemic diet at in, in, in version one, it's a low glycemic diet. So um, that's really what we're looking for with insulin resistance. We're looking to get rid of the, the crappy uh, refined carbohydrates out of your diet, which this does, um, and, um, and put you on a very low glycemic diet. So version one, two, or three would totally help somebody with insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome or diabetes. Um, if you wanna step it up a notch and go to version two or three, you'll get more results from it, but uh, all three of them would, would be great for insulin resistance. Sally asked, um, for Hashimoto's disease, eczema, osteoarthritis, oh yeah, rhetorical questions. Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, in lines with, I think this diet's good for pretty much all chronic diseases, I'm going to answer yes to all of those. If we break them down a little bit, Hashimoto's disease is something we see a lot in the clinic. Um, I think it's treated very poorly in conventional uh, medicine because it is an autoimmune disease. It is not a thyroid disease. It is an autoimmune disease that attacks your thyroid and you end up with a, a poor thyroid. But at its root, it is an aberrant immune system that attacks the thyroid tissue. And there's nothing in conventional medicine they have to treat that. All they can do is give you thyroid replacement therapy, which I'm not against. I think it's important to get on thyroid replacement therapy because I think it's really bad for you to have an under or overactive thyroid, but they are not treating the root of the problem at all. Um, and I uh, am comfortable saying that I think conventional um, uh, doctors would say the same thing, which is why oftentimes they don't even test for it. So, you know, you'll, you'll be hypothyroid, you'll go to your doctor and you'll say, can you test me for, to see if I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis? And they'll be like, well, we could, but it doesn't really matter if it comes back positive or not, because I'm going to treat you the same exact way, whether it's positive or not. Um, I feel we do a superior job of addressing Hashimoto's from, um, from a holistic pr perspective in, in functional and integrative medicine, because we are um, wanting to optimize your thyroid, but we're also looking at it from the root cause, which is a, it's an autoimmune disease. What better thing to do for autoimmune disease than the Walls diet? Um, so yes, um, for eczema, uh, which technically is not called an autoimmune disease, but I really think it is an autoimmune disease or it smells and tastes a lot like an autoimmune disease. So yes, you have a high likelihood of responding well to this diet. Um, you have a high likelihood of responding well with eczema for just taking gluten and dairy out and doing nothing else. Um, sometimes eczema needs to be on a low sulfur or a low histamine diet, which is further along the pathways of um, refining this. So uh, not everybody responds to it, but it's a really good place to start to see. Osteoarthritis um, is wear and tear. You know, rheumatoid arthritis respond, should respond really well. Osteoarthritis is more wear and tear. Although we're finding that, uh, it's also called degenerative joint disease, we're finding that there, there may be an autoimmune component to osteoarthritis, even though it's not considered autoimmune. So um, being on any sort of anti-inflammatory diet, such as the WALS um, protocol, would, would be a really good thing to try. Um, and from Thea, she can't hear anything. She's going to exit, and maybe she's back. Hi, Thea. Um, and uh, Ashley may have fixed that. We think Ashley fixed that. So hopefully you came back, yeah. And Brianna said, are there brands of supplements that you like specifically prebiotics? There are. Um, uh, yes, I do. I, 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 I like talking about supplements. So I'm happy to get this question. Um, so let's start off by saying that Dr. Walls, uh, one of the things I really appreciate about Dr. Walls is 
she tries really hard to focus on diet primarily and make supplements a very small portion of what she's recommending. Um, she has made it abundantly clear that um, we cannot recreate what we do in diet with supplements. Um, and I can say that the biggest, I would say the, 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 the place where um, I've had to catch myself the most as a clinician is over supplementing patients and not focusing on their diet enough. And it's easy to do that. And we have, um, you know, the, the supplement companies who are all lovely and well-intentioned, they're in our ears constantly um, about things that get our attention. And it's really easy to hand people uh, pill bottles. Um, so for something like prebiotics, you really don't need to do it with a supplement. You can do this with diet. Um, so the big prebiotics are things like um, lentils, um, garlic, onions, Jerusalem artichoke, and leeks. So uh, Nasha Winters, who's a mentor of mine, who I love, and I recommend her book, uh, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer to a lot of patients. And she's a big keto gal. Um, her, her motto is a leak a week. Um, so, and, and with the Walls diet, you're having such a large variety and a diverse amount of plant fibers. You really don't need to supplement with a prebiotic unless you're not doing the diet properly. Um, it would probably be overkill. That being said, if you really want to do this, um, acacia is a really good one and an inexpensive one. Um, flax is a good one and an inexpensive one. We have a product here in the clinic called Biotogen by Claire Labs that I like a lot. Um, and then Megaspore uh, Biotic, which is a brand we work with, they have something called Mega Prebiotic. And those are all great. Mega Prebiotic is probably the best one, but it's really it's a lot more expensive and I don't know that it's worth the extra price. Biotogen um, tastes kind of like cotton candy to me, so I kind of like it. Um, not everybody likes it. Um, my kids did not agree when I told them that. I'm like, it tastes like cotton candy. And like and they made that face. Um, but most of the prebiotics are inexpensive. So if you need to go that route, and, and yes, I like where you're going here because I do think prebiotics, if, if, if you put me on a desert island and said, I'm giving you either prebiotics or probiotics, I would take the prebiotics any day because that's giving your body the nutritional substrate it needs to produce your own probiotics. And you know we have so many strains of bacteria in our gut that we, don't, we, we only can, can pick up a fraction of those in the available probiotics that are out there. So I'm really moving away from using probiotics as much and using more prebiotics and postbiotics, short chain fatty acids. Um, Dana asked, can the diet be adjusted to be used by people with sulfur allergies? Yeah, and we've talked to Dr. Walls about this. Um, yes, uh, you just need to come off of the low sulfur foods or experiment with the sulfur foods and see where that line is for you. Um, you know, obviously you're not gonna get the three cups a day of the sulfur rich veggies if you are allergic to sulfur. So, you know, we just pack it into the other groups and we don't do the, the sulfur groups. But yeah, totally, you'll get benefits from it even if you don't do the sulfur foods. Um, so Sally said the doctor performed a thyroidectomy um, and Sally is referring to something we talked about earlier, but I can't remember what we talked about earlier. You remember what we talked about earlier? The doctor performed a thyroidectomy with Hashimoto's maybe? Hmm. Maybe you, we were talking Hashimoto's earlier. Let's see if we scroll up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, Hash, so Sally, um, uh, it's, um, I, it sounds like Sally has Hashimoto's that was um, post thyroidectomy. Um, so you likely had Hashimoto's that likely caused thyroid destruction. And I'm not sure why you would have a thyroidectomy, maybe because it was there were long nodules but you had a thyroidectomy and now you're on replacement, which is the right thing to do. But again, that autoimmune process doesn't go away just because your thyroid's gone. Your, your body will attack other tissues and you can monitor that by looking at your thyroid autoantibodies. That's the TPO antibody and thyroglobulin antibody. And one of my teachers, Datis Karazian, talks about how in Hashimoto's in particular, that those antibodies will go around the body and attack other, other uh, parts of the body, particularly the cerebellum in the brain. This is not talked about in conventional um, endocrinology, but Cyrex labs, which we work with, and he works with a lot, they have tests that will look at cross-reactive autoimmune patterns. 
So if someone wanted to spend, they're, they're not cheap, but if somebody wanted to spend the money to do a cross-reactive autoimmune panel, you can see potentially if you have elevated cerebellum antibodies, that's not a good sign if you have Hashimoto. So um, just because they took the thyroid out and just because they got things straightened out doesn't mean you still don't have an autoimmune process. You likely do, and it should be addressed. Um, all right, Thea's back. Uh, for those with MTHFR mutation and trouble with sulfur foods, Someone like me who doesn't feel good eating organ products. Any thought about that? Substitute another fruit, just take molybdenum. Um, well, yeah, you should be on a low sulfur diet. You should take molybdenum. Um, you know, you, you, this would be a special diet. Um, we want to support your MTHFR pathways with foods that you don't, you know, that you can do or supplements that you can do. Um, and if you don't do well with organ meats, then we take them out. So, you know, yeah, we make the necessary adjustments. Your nutrient levels likely would not look as stellar as that graph because you're not doing um, sulfur rich um, nutrients and organ meats. But yeah, you could still get benefit from this. We would have to like fine tune it quite a bit, but yeah, we can do it. Uh, oops, someone now just posted the same thing. That's okay. Um, any other questions? Ocean, did I answer your question? Come on back in there if I if if uh, if, I, if if we need more on that one. Wow, and we made it under an hour. Good, right under. Yeah, so if anybody has more questions, um, send them through. Is there uh, an email they can send them to us at and? I'll, I'll, I'll address them. Yeah, you can send your questions into, let's do, um, just Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y at heartofwellness.org and I will um, filter them and get them to David. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Yeah, thanks, Sally. Yeah, so you'll all receive an email with um, information on how to view this again. You can forward that to your friends and share it. Um, and thanks for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you virtually or in person at Heart of Wellness. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Bye.